Good morning. Now, I don't know that any gospel that does not thrust man into a confrontation with the God of the impossible or deliver him into that place where he must confront things that are impossible to himself is a gospel at all. Now on the face of it, that probably seems rather reasonable to some. That this work of God through Jesus Christ who is the God of all gods above every god or thing that can be named is sovereign in it completely sovereign in it that there is nothing that man adds to God by his agreement or can detract or diminish God in denial or disagreement that God is undeterrable in all matters concerning his will and purpose. To have some gospel that does not present this and in the believer keep this as a centerpiece, if you will, of the truth we might ask, is it a gospel at all? Because if it is at all man-dependent, though man is the beneficiary, but if it is at all man-dependent, then it is not all God doing it. And if, it is not all, and if it is not all God doing it, so to speak, then it is ungodly. <laughs> And it is ungodly. Only God can do the godly. You know, if a man has certain favorite things, he becomes aware of them, you know. Even if not always considering them as favorites. But when matters come up, like what ice cream do you want? Oh, I want chocolate. Then he's aware, oh yeah, chocolate's my favorite. He may not think about that all the time. But I think of scriptures that are so dear to me that God forbid that I single them out as over or above any other. But I can't deny that they're some of my favorites. And one of them is, now to him who works, the reward is not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him who works not, but believeth on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited to him as righteousness. So the justification of the ungodly, and this is one of those impossible places we come to face or are brought into or forced, if you will, to confront the justification of the ungodly. How can that be? How can what is not God be justified before God? And I'm not going to give any uh, answer for two reasons. It's, it's a continuing source of investigation to me. And to give any answer from any particular place that I abide with any resolution that I'm satisfied with would be to rob you. As though it could be explained. As though uh, here's a shortcut but it's going to require investigation. And that investigation is going to be of God himself. 
And so a gospel brings us into that. A man investigating God. Uh, how impossible is that? A finite thing, a created thing. Looking into the uncreated. Seeking to apprehend he who is the uncreated of all and the creator of all. And so the justification of the ungodly, a man may come to appreciate, if he has been a recipient of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, a gift made available or gift given through faith, by faith and faith, but by God's sovereignty to believe, to believe that this faith is a gift. It's not that we have faith and decide where we're going to apply it, it sounds that way very often. I hear that gospel very often preached. When you have faith in the chair that it's going to support you, therefore you sit down. So, therefore, take that faith and apply it to God now. You see, you already have faith in a lot of things, so apply that to God. But the faith of the Son of God is very different than the faith that's reliant upon your history well, I've sat in a chair many times, it's never collapsed. Or your experience, yeah, the chair has always supported me. Because this life is new. The revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ is always new. It's never, oh, I knew that because I tried that already a whole lot of times. Yeah. So along with that verse, I think of the, the other that's also very dear to me when I think of it. Now we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of God, the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So again, bring, brought into the impossibility, the earthen vessel holding a treasure. The earthen vessel, a finite thing holding the infinite. How can that be? We hold this treasure, the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, in an earthen vessel. You see, there are many impossibilities we must confront. There are many things that, are, on the face of them, are, are, I think it's pronounced prima facie, or prima facie, contradictions. How can the finite hold the infinite? How can, the un, how can the created thing hold the uncreated life? And these are all places that we investigate. We're told, ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. If you're not compelled to or impelled to, I, I know there's nothing I can say to get you there. Nothing any man can say to get you there. Either God's going to get you there, where you know that compelling And even coupled with the first verse I mentioned, the reward is not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him who works not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited to him as righteousness. So there is a crediting by God in what God gives to man, that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Which went in the man has a reward of righteousness. And part of that reward maybe a great deal of that reward is in being allowed receiving grace in its compulsion to cause us 
to ask and seek and knock. And that on the face of it is contradictory. Who wants a gift? <laughs> Who wants a gift that causes a man to know his lack and so impel him in his knowing of not knowing to ask and seek and knock. So this matter of confronting the impossible, <laughs> this is my joy. This is my joy. Learning to abide in what is impossible for me. Absolutely in every way. Because while there's still yet possibilities to me, I'm compelled to strive to attain to them. But once all is confronted as impossible, what, what other thing can a man do? Now I understand that sounds very contradictory because I just said, ask, seek, knock. But it's a joy to know one's lack one's need, one's necessity, the impossibility of it. You see, I once had a life that was very stressful, very terrible. As I look back at it, I'm able to see it even more clearly now. And I'm not talking about the necessity of surveying these things, but I'm just aware of it. All the work that was required to support what I thought was life. All the work. It was unbearable. Yet I thought that was the possibility that I might be able to. And so I struggled. What do I have to do? You may know this, you may not, God knows. And so there was always this working, 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 working to try to arrange for a desired result of rest. And it never worked. Precisely because I did not believe at that time, or was not walking in the faith of the God who justifies the ungodly. And so when it all became impossible, absolutely impossible to me, what a relief that God and his sovereignty is in charge of all things, and what I am, I am by the grace of God, nothing else. And where once that was thought as even an advanced kind of apprehension to be able to be spoken, that somebody really had to work hard, diligently, to be able to say that. But what I am, I am by the grace of God, or I am what I am by the grace of God. You come to find out <laughs> there's no avoiding that. All things are that are. Everything that is, is by the grace of God. Now, I know that upsets some, and some don't want to hear that. that certain spirits, certain things, certain matters, certain situations even, are by the grace of God. But all things are appointed to the glorification of the Lord Jesus Christ. And until or unless we're one to that, an impossible thing for man, most impossible perhaps, to be brought to the place where the glory of another outshines any necessity for self-seeking glory, 
of which I am not immune to accusation, accusation, excuse me, not accusation, accusation. Yeah, I'm subject to that accusation, self-glorying. But that doesn't take away the truth from the truth that it is all prepared, all created to the end of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, to whatever measure we're interested in our own glory, that's going to be somewhat impossible for us to endure. <laughs> somewhat. Something is not somewhat impossible. It's either impossible or not. So if you know you've been called into the impossible to meet the God of the impossible, blessed are you. Happy are you. Even if you don't know it yet. That the joy of the Lord is yours. You see, you never get very far from this impossibility to me. Then I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That is impossible for me to reconcile. That the righteous would die for the most unrighteous. I must seek. I must ask. I must knock. There has been a passing popularity with how-to books, how to pray effectively, how to do this, how to do that, how to know God, how to whatever, be effective, all coming with some sort of advice or instruction or preaching about what you have to do in order to. And while one thinks that way, that there is something left for them to do that God might succeed with them, there is a burden There's a burden. But being reconciled to the impossibility and the impossible, which is a gift through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the faith of the Son of God, we begin to delight that it is impossible for man and only possible for the sovereign God of all. The God who knows all things from the beginning has purposed all things according to the counsel of his own will. And I think of this impossible statement, declaration, commandment, instruction, love one another as I have loved you. On the one hand, who would easily say, oh, I can do that. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, Lord. But on the other hand, who can resist 
wanting to know how much they had been loved by the Lord. I can look at any other. I can look at any other man, any other woman, any other child. And think or say, okay, I'll love them to the measure I have been loved. not find that impossible. But on that other hand, I cannot be but be delighted to investigate and ask and seek and knock. How much have you loved me, Lord? How much have you loved me? So the impossible of the instruction becomes the delight of investigation. Yeah. Love one another as I have loved you. You will not be disappointed to ask, seek, knock, question, investigate, discover. how much the Lord has loved you. And those who believe that will know how much the Lord has loved you. Be blessed.